So, James, Manchester City and their title defence started pretty well, I think it's fair to say. Burnley, especially at Turf Moor, I think we were all potentially not... I don't know if anybody was worried, but I think it was a easily kind of, you know, potentially a stumbling block for this Manchester City team. Lots of, I don't know about you, but lots of the opinion pieces I've seen for the few people who don't have Man City winning the league this year point to the fact that, James, look, four titles in a row has not ever been done in the history of English football. The great Liverpool teams, the Manchester United teams, all this, it's just never happened. Um, Also, the, uh, as I heard it referred to as the, the Dwight York effect, um, which I heard on a, on a podcast uh, recently, which is that James, once you've won it all, what is there to motivate you anymore? Right. So I think, you know, it's one of these things that you look at and you go, well, I've kind of won the treble now. So unless I'm trying to win a quadruple or focus on individual awards, I've kind of done all the stuff I need to do. Those are the main detractors away from Manchester City not winning the league this year. I know you and I both think, I think that that Manchester City will probably do it this year. Pep's on a different level and all this kind of stuff. But how much of a blow is an injury to, James, let's be honest, their most valuable player in Kevin De Bruyne? Because... James, the injuries in certain finals and stuff is okay, not ideal and whatnot. But James, we're talking about until probably at some point in January, Kevin De Bruyne playing competitive football matches again. And James, with that amount of time back, um, off, is Kevin De Bruyne going to be back to his best February or March kind of time? I mean, if any team, if any manager, if any squad can deal with the loss of a player as valuable as Kevin De Bruyne, I think it's this Man City team. But how much closer now are Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, blah, 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 to Manchester City? And is their title defence in any stronger jeopardy now? Um, The first thing I want to say is, granted, Manchester City won 3-0. Good um, good performance, kept a clean sheet. I think them and Man United were the only teams to keep a clean sheet um, uh, this match week. But in their last eight games against against, um, uh, Burnley, they've only conceded one goal. And and like majority of them are 5-0. 42 to one, you know, I think, it, it, in their history. Yeah, it's it, wild. It's, it's, it's quite so. It's a team that they like to play against, especially in the um in Turf Moor. Um, but how important is Kevin De Bruyne? Massively, in my opinion, he's he's still their best player. And the big and the biggest thing for Kevin De Bruyne, he's their most clutch player. How many big moments have you seen Kevin De Bruyne had for Manchester City? Game at PSG in in in, in 2017. Uh, Champions League. Uh, the game against. Real Madrid in, in in back to back in 2019 and in, in like last season too, and how many big 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 Premier League games has he came up trump? He is a huge player for them, and in the last five years has been arguably the best player, um, in the Premier League. But Jack, as you mentioned with this team, Manchester City's kind of seen and done everything. People forget. I think two 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 three seasons ago, I think the um the lockdown season. They won the league with Kevin De Bruyne virtually injured for for the majority of, yeah. of the season. Granted, he played some games um here there some some big games, but he was out for a big chunk of that season. I remember Ilkay Gundogan just going off, Bernardo Silva playing out of his skin, Phil Foden playing. Like there was a lot of a lot of big big performers there. This team's used to it. I feel this team can really cope with anything. And to me, it brings a bit more responsibility. And I and I want to see how certain players perform because now Gunnar Gowan isn't there who was to me the best performer during that times there I want to see what Erlen Hall is going to do can he step up even more because people talk about how much he profits it. he profits off Kevin De Bruyne's ability to find a cross I want to well, see James, him without a Kevin De Bruyne now our, our criticism of him is what right well okay we've got a couple but one of our big criticisms of Erling Haaland is it's probably quite an easy job as a striker if you've got Kevin De Bruyne giving you the ball like let's be fair um, you know, if, if you've got probably the best playmaker and James, I'm pretty comfortable saying this now. I don't mean to open up a new topic of conversation, but I'm happy giving Kevin De Bruyne the the the, the name as the greatest midfielder the Premier League has ever seen since 100%. 1992. I think I think he's well deserving of that. I think it quite kind of helps Erling Haaland and the whole Manchester City team. My, my other thing that I'm going to add to that yet, Jack, is to me, I think it kind of forces Manchester City's hand. A little bit because if you Jack Jack remember they were linked with Lucas Piquetta and it's like okay they still got Rodri in there Bernardo Silva complaining they're just on coverage and of course they got Kevin De Bruyne the best midfielder in the world now you know you're not going to be with him for close to what four to six months right you you at some point you you know you have to do something you have to look to pull um 
the trigger. And and and, and, if, and if you're West Ham right now, you're thinking your best player is gone. Add another 25 because you know what yeah. the way football um market is is right now. It's going to be adding and, and, and adding and adding. But Jack, as I said, with this team, can they cope? In the Premier League, without a shadow of a doubt. In the Champions League, I think it's going to be a bit more of a slope. It's like a slope right. then because at the end of the day, the quality of Champions League is so much higher, you know, than the Premier League. As much as people would, would disagree with me there for Manchester City, they yeah. figured out the Premier League. There's no tough, real tough game for them. Maybe Spurs. Spurs is the one team that really <laughs> yeah, um, <right. laughs> um, troubled them. But they understand the Premier League. You know, granted, they won the Champions League last year, but teams are going to... Oh, you go, you you're going you, like you come to our place with no Kevin De Bruyne, okay? It gets into you know Inter could have won that game, and if you do the whole XG philosophy thing, if you if you breed into that, Inter should have won that game as well. So it, it definitely is interesting. I think you're absolutely right. Um, I think that Phil Foden, Calvin Phillips, go go ahead. And another thing I think it it, it destroys Manchester City is their creativity. You mentioned I think that was the thing of um Erlen Holland upset that he didn't get the ball from Bernardo Silva. Brando yes. Silva is an unbelievable player and he, and he can't find that pass. But the one player that every single time is going to look for that pass is Kevin De Bruyne. So right. if you're a player like Erlen Haaland, you're going to be 10 times more frustrated because a lot of these guys are quite safe with their passes, trying to work it, like get a one-two down the line, flash across. While Kevin De Bruyne, he's going to go for that Hollywood pass. He's going to go for that ball over the top. He's going to try to slide it through. So he has that bit of X factor that not a lot of their Manchester Chester City players have, as much as they're all great technically, like Jack Grealish, like um, Phil Foden, like Bernardo Silva. They don't quite have that X factor to find that killer pass. While Kevin De Bruyne does, and again, they can be born, and, and you might see a lot of one nil, two nil wins for City now. But you might, you're not going to get that exciting, you know, flash. You're not going to be, you know, wow, what that look at that incredible pass. You're probably going to be missing that for a couple few months now. Well, look, James, I, I think we've I think we've covered this pretty pretty well here. I mean, you know, again, my final thing: Calvin Phillips, time to step up, bro. Phil Foden, I don't have a position or I don't know. Right, well, okay, here's your chance. Time to step up. Lucas Paqueta comes in. Okay, Bernardo Silva can come inside. Maybe Doku signs, right, and fills up that wing spot. So there are players. And look, guys, I know I kind of started out this video and I kind of, I guess I misspoke a little uh, little by saying that De Bruyne is the MVP of this team. Guys, Pep Guardiola is the MVP of this team. The reason reason why this team plays so well and the reason why losing a player such as the the calibre and ability of Kevin De Bruyne is probably not going to be as big of a deal as it probably should be for most teams is because of that bald dude in, in Manchester. And I'm not talking about Eric Ten Hag, by the way, I'm talking about Pep Guardiola. Um, Look, people at home, you've heard what me and James have had to say. I don't think me and James think that this is going to be that big of a deal. And that is no disrespect to Kevin De Bruyne. You heard me and James both say this is probably the best midfielder that's ever graced the Premier League. I still think even with this injury, Man City kind of coast to this league this year. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Drop a like on the video if you like what you've seen. Can Arsenal do it? Arsenal fans, James and Arsenal fans, let me know. Manchester United fans, Ma- um, Liverpool fans, Chelsea fans, all you guys. Newcastle look good. Can you catch Manchester City without Kevin De Bruyne, James? Unfortunately, um, Pep Guardiola can't get injured and keep him away from like the team or something <laughs> like that. I, I, if that could happen, if he pulled the hamstring, or, like he's out for I would love that. But unfortunately, right. I don't think it works like that, Jack, you know, because if that would happen, then we all would definitely definitely Different have a chance. Baby. But yeah, um, guys, guys, let us know your thoughts. Drop a like, hit that subscribe button if you're not already. And until next time, we will see you.